Hey everyone, welcome back. We're going to follow up from the last one in using database triggers, but in this one we're going to be looking at how we edit the data. So before we do that, let's just go and test what we did in the last one. Because I went quite long in the last one, I didn't really have too much time to test it, so let's do that now. Now before we do that, we're going to have to set up our subscription and our organization and our user, otherwise our privacy rules won't kick in. And it won't be any good because you know the system is working around data integrity so we've got to do that so let's create a subscription then uh, quickly in under app data and okay let's call our company Cynamics technology if I can spell ink Okay, uh, let's say they're not on a trial, the SAS plan, they're on the premium of course. Uh, admins, we don't have those yet, so what we're going to do, we'll create that. Okay, okay, and we'll go back and edit it, and then we can grab the unique ID. Okay, and then we can go into users, and we can add a user, and we can pop the subscription in there, so that this user is linked to that subscription. SAS admin is no, and let's say uh, Jerry Davidson, okay, and his email address is Jerry D at Synamics Tech dot co, for example, okay, that's enough there. And then we need to grab, create an organization. So again, we'll paste the subscription in there. The users, we need to give Jerry permission to use this. So we'll just pop his email in there. And the name is going to be the same. Synamics Technologies Inc. Okay, that's enough for that one. Uh, but what we will do is we will just grab the unique ID of the org and we will place it as the current org because that's important. We'll also put it as a default org. Okay, so I think that that's set up in terms of our users. One thing probably might do is just add Jerry as an admin into our subscription. There we go. Okay, uh, we don't need any of that. We're not in, uh, applying the expiry date yet, so we don't need to set it. Okay, so that all looks good to me so far. Okay, so we've got our core data set up there. So I've just set up a, a <clears throat> simple front end for us to test this. So let's <clears throat> run as Jerry. Good old Jerry, or Jezza, as he's known to his friends. Okay, so yeah, simple front end, and this is obviously going to list our data. Now this is hooked up to to the list type, as you'd expect. So in our design, let me just show you that. Uh, our repeating group is hooked up to the pipe of business entities, okay, which is the list type, not the container type. Okay. So then we can click to add one. So let's just uh, say that this is HTA management. Okay, and we'll just put in a, a sample address. Uh, ridge mount view. Ridge mount. I don't know what it is when I'm making these videos. My, my typing goes completely out of the window. Uh, okay, ridge mount, rd, whatever, whatever. Okay, and the contact is going to be, let's say, Alison. <laughs> Alison uh, Worsley, for example. Okay, so with our database triggers in place, this should now save the, the the core business entity, the core address, the core contact information to the to those data types, and then in the back end, that's going to update the 
the list type and obviously only when it's added to the list type are we going to see it in this list that we've got so let's save that so this should say yeah there we go okay so that's now added it to the list type and that's great and we can add more although i won't subject you to my awful typing right now so and there we go so obviously we can then go and edit that now at the moment we don't have the triggers in place to deal with this because we need it to obviously when they write this information and change this information we need to write it back to the to the core data types but then we're going to need to write it back to the to the list type as well okay so here's our graphic from a couple of videos ago where if we remember that the the name of the customer gets stored in the business entity the address gets stored in the address type and the first and last name gets stored in the new contact record now we've already dealt with that as a new record but obviously we need to deal with it when the user edits the information so if you can imagine then when the user updates the name we then need to update via a trigger the name on the business entity on the list type okay and the same with the address and the same with the contact so we're going to need to set up some database triggers for that so what we're going to need to do then is to check the relevant information which is has the name changed on the business entity has the address changed on the address and has the first or last name changed on the contacts and if it has then we need to trigger those things and each one will then go and update the business entity record okay and that's all done at the back end so it's just a case of thinking about the different places that we're going to need to watch for the change so that it triggers a change to the business entity and that way whenever anywhere in the system somebody updates an address uh, or updates the name then the list type gets automatically updated to make sure it's constantly in sync so let's have a look at our workflows so there's things going on that are to do with the the ui and our data being pushed into different groups i'm not really going to explain that because our focus needs to be on the database triggers so at the minute we've got a workflow which is to save based on when the, the user clicks save so we as we covered in the last one we create the address we create the contact and then we create the business entity okay so now we need to implement a version of this that deals with it when the data is edited and the only difference being is that there is a business entity that the user edits uh, in, in the front end so we just need to check to see if the business entity is empty with that one which means that it's a new record so alternatively we then need to do a version of this that just says the group's business entity imports business entity is not empty so we'll just make a copy of that and we'll paste that in and we can just say is is not empty okay and so this is the workflow now that's going to edit the core details and then we need to set up the database triggers to handle that at the back end so we're not going to create an address we're not going to create a contact we just need to edit those details so let's just get rid of uh, these few workflow steps okay and we will insert a step and this time it doesn't really matter too much the order because each one has got its own database trigger to make that change okay because it can't just be reliant on one data type that was fine for the new record but we could be editing it in in all of them one of them two of them we just need to set up the database triggers on each one as we went through a second ago so what we can do then is to say we're going to make a change to a thing and this is going to be our the groups business entity that we're this is the entity the business entity we're actually editing Okay, which is to do with what I'm doing at the front end not too important at the minute so as long as we know that we're editing the business entity that the sorry that we're saving the business entity that the user selected to edit okay and the only field that we need to change on there is the name because it's the only one that's getting updated okay and then we then just read it from the input and then that's there so the next one is we then need to update the address so make changes to a thing and then this is going to be the what we can do there actually result of step one and we can just say that it's the primary address because we know that's the right one and then again we can just update the address with 
what's in the multi-line inputs addresses value okay and then we can insert an action and then now we can update the contact so again we can say result of step one and then we can just say primary contact and two fields this time first name and last name so we can just say the inputs for the first name input first name value and then the last name okay it's the i l name it's value okay so that's going to fire now each one of these potentially could fire a database trigger because you, if you can imagine when if the name changes on the, the actual business entity in other words a name that they've typed in then we need to trigger that to change that on the actual list type and the same with the address and the same with the contact obviously we only want it to fire if there's a change and that's what we set up on the database trigger so the front end is done so now we need to go to our back end like we did before so there's our original trigger that, that creates it so let's now create a trigger that works if the name is changed on the business entity so we can go new database trigger and I'm going to change this to our red color just pop it in our DB trigger folder and this one we will say uh, update business entity list type okay and the type that we're looking for is business entity okay now the only when condition if you think about it is we definitely do not want this to trigger if it's a new record so if you remember from last time how we check if it's a new record is with the before change because that's the state of the record before we made the the change on the front end okay so we definitely want to make sure that this is not empty before we do anything else because we don't want this to trigger if it's a new record okay so then we can say uh, and business entities now its name is not business entity before changes name okay so what we're saying is if it's not a new record and we've changed the name how it was before is different than how it is now basically then that's when we want this to trigger okay so when we're doing that again we're going to do exactly the same thing here we're now going to create our own separate uh, workflow and we're just going to call this update be name you won't have to do this for every single field this is just how we're dealing with this at the minute so we can say update uh, be name we don't want it as a public workflow we do need the parameter so we will need the business entity to get passed in so that we can deal with it in our workflow and that's obviously going to be of type business entity okay i'll just change that to the cyan and stick it in the api folder good stuff so we update the be name so now what we need to do is fairly straightforward really is we just need to make a change to because we're assuming that if the business entity exists then the pipe business entity the list type must exist so what we can do then is to say make a change to a thing and the thing we want to change is we need to go and find the, the list type that is linked to the business entity that we've passed in so we're going to need to do a search for and then we're going to do type business entity and then we're going to say where the business entity is equal to the business entity that's passed into us okay and then we can say that we want the first item because there's only going to be one item that matches that and then what we're going to do then is we're going to change the name and it's going to be equal to the business entities name okay so hope that makes sense what we're doing is on the front end we're changing the name of the business entity or we may not be changing it but we're, we're making a change assuming that it's changed so the trigger is going to pick that up and say if it's not a new record and the name has changed then fire this so obviously we're going to need to trigger our our actual api workflow otherwise nothing's going to happen so 
update be name is going to be run at the current date and time we need to pass in business entity now the state of the record after the change okay and then that will trigger this and then we're going to say sorry it'll trigger this one and then we're going to say go and search for that pipe business entity's first item because there's only you're doing a search and we only want the first one that matches that condition which means that which is the one that's linked to the business entity that we're actually updating and then update the name okay so obviously each one of those things that we did including the address and the contact will need to have their own triggers as well but let's test this one first okay okay so we'll click to edit okay and then we will change let's say it's management services LLC okay and then we will save that and the, the trigger should get up should update the record and there we go okay so our name has been updated on our list type via the DB trigger so what we'll do is I'll go into the next video and we'll do the address and the contact because I don't want this to go too long but you can see what we're trying to achieve with with our database triggers and the, the thing now is that whenever in the system that you would update a name of a customer on a business entity we don't have to worry about that we know that that is going to get synced up automatically now onto our list type i hope that was useful for you we'll go through quickly in the next video how to do the the address and the contact so that we've got a full holistic trigger sequence going on to update our list type to sync our data together and then we can move on thank you for watching take it easy have a good day and i will see you in the next one